Hey, good morning. My name is Katie Deutsch, and for my first year in ISM, I am studying forensic science. So a little bit my, about myself. Um, I'm a junior, and I have three brothers. They are 14, 12, and 11. Uh, I run cross country and track for Frisco High School, and I like to spend my free time with my friends and watching TV. And I like to think that I'm hardworking, easygoing, and optimistic. Uh, so what exactly does a forensic scientist do? So forensic scientists collect and analyze physical evidence from a crime scene um, and interpret any results so that they may be used by detectives to aid in their investigations. So here's a little short clip from CSI. You just kind of see what they're doing. Did I do that? OK. <laughs> This is irrelevant. Just at the beginning. Did you? Another life wouldn't be great comrades. I think Nicholas killed himself to protect you, my friend. He was a loyal friend, I think not. I didn't write her with lots of friends. And you're gonna need Okay, so there you just can kind of see some of the different things they do. So fingerprinting, ballistics, uh, blood or DNA analysis, uh, all those are pretty common. So on to research. Um, the first thing that I read about was um, the origins of modern forensic science. So it was started all started by a 19th century French medical legal pathologist, Edmund Lockard. And he wanted to create the first crime lab and modernize the way um, we view criminal investigations. So um, he didn't have a lot of support. Most people thought he was pretty crazy. So he had to, um, after assisting on multiple high profile cases with the police and proving himself again and again, he was able to gather the funding and recognition to be successful. Um, it opened in 1912. And he, he stressed the importance of physical evidence and believed that every contact leaves a trace. Um, as, along with creating the first cr crime lab, he um, started or created the basis for many of uh, many of the standard procedures for fi fingerprinting, DNA, and facial recognition. Uh, secondly, oh, I researched um, the difference between uh, TV and how it portrays like forensic science and things like that compared to how it is in real life. So it's seen a lot on shows like Criminal Minds, Bones, and CSI. Um, based on my research and like talking to the people I interviewed, I gathered that the processes themselves are fairly accurate. However, on TV, most of them are. Um, they're done in an hour to a day, when in reality, it takes about two weeks to um, actually finish the process. So it, it happens a lot quicker, obviously. Um, so it's pretty it's a stretch of reality, but um, they do keep it pretty accurate. And also, uh, not everything on TV is possible um, in real life. So you can't really, um, some of the things they do, so like piecing like partial fingerprints together is one of the things they do. Um, you couldn't really do that because it wouldn't hold up in court. Um, but that's one of the. OK, my interviews. So I had six interviews total. My first interview was with um, Dr. Tracy Dyer, a forensic pathologist at UT Southwestern. And she was super nice, and she answered all my questions, made sure I had all the information I needed. Um, I learned from her that um, a really important thing to do was like focus on your schoolwork, because no matter what career path you choose or wh whatever you decide to do, um, that'll always be with you. 
in effect like what you want to do. Um, she took me around the entire uh, UT Southwestern facility and she showed me all the different rooms and I also got to see like the firing range where they collect all the um, the projectiles and things like that and so that was really cool. Um, secondly, I had an interview with um, Michelle Bobel. She's a criminalist at the Plano Police Department. So this was sort of um, more the path I was looking for. So there I really got a feel of what the atmosphere is like. Um, and I also learned that surprisingly they have really good hours. Um, they normally work four to five days a week from eight to five, some of them later. Um, thirdly, I had an interview with Dr. Lynn Salzberger, the Assistant County Medical Examiner at the Collin County Office. Um, she was very helpful and um, she helped me realize that it's definitely not a glamorous profession. You can't be afraid to get a little dirty and also that you may not realize it but um, social skills are really important so that's something um, a lot of people don't realize you need to work on. Next, I had an interview with Special Agent John Skillstad of the Dallas FBI. Um, although I wasn't really looking into becoming an FBI agent, um, this interview was really interesting because he had so many different stories to tell. And he also gladly gave me names and numbers of um, people from uh, people that he worked with um, from the evidence response team at the Dallas Field, field Office. Um, I actually couldn't get together with any of them, but it was still a really helpful interview. Uh, my fifth interview is with Tamika Robinson, who is a criminalist at the Frisco Police Department. Um, this was a really cool interview because her coworker Stephanie was there, so I basically got to interview two people at once, so I kind of got two different answers or perspectives for all, the, all my questions. And since Tamika got called out for something, um, they were taking a tour, people on tour, um, Stephanie, her coworker, was able to take me on a tour of the crime lab, and she showed me all their different little rooms and she took me out to the van that they take to crime scenes that they can do. They basically have enough equipment to do basic procedures on site. Um, at this interview I really learned a lot about how to prepare for a career in forensic science, so about what colleges to look at um, and also where to look for like online courses and training. Lastly my interview was with my last interview was with Callie McClendon, a criminalist at the Allen Police Department. Um, on this interview, I really learned a lot about what it's like to work in a. Um, she told me about what it's like to work in a male-dominated workplace, and how it can be really challenging for some people. Um, she also advised me not to get a degree in criminal justice because, if you decide that you don't ever want to work at a police department or anything with law enforcement, there's not really anything else you can do with it. So she said, go something general and then minor in all the criminal justice things you want. Um, overall, I thought that my interviews were really successful, and I took away important information from each one. Hold on, what's going on? Okay. Um, my mentors, okay, so I actually have two mentors. Miss um, Robinson, I asked her um, first, and she agreed. She said that she would love to, but she was, her only concern was that the caseload wouldn't be enough to give me enough information to report back on. So she talked to Callie, who she actually recommended that I interview. Um, and asked if she would agree to be my mentor as well. That way I could switch off weeks between the two and get enough information that way. So those are my mentors. And then my mission, oh my gosh. My mission statement this year was through ISM, I hope to expand my knowledge and gain a deeper understanding of the field of forensic science and also to develop skills and habits that will benefit me in the future. So my, um, one of my main goals was to see if this was something that I would consider having a career in. Um, and so far, I've been really interested in it. And hopefully by the end of the year, I will be sure if this is what I want to do or not. Oops. Next, my quote was, unless you try and do something beyond what you have already mastered, you will never grow, by Ronald Osborne. And I think this quote motivates me because I think we all know it's tempting to take the easy way out but um, to better yourself and get the results that you're looking for. You have to keep trying new things and be afraid to fail. So a lot of times when I don't really want to do um, things, I remind myself that I'm not going to get anything done. I don't do the work. So 
Um, so far, I've had a great experience in ISM, and now that I have my mentors, I hope that the next semester is just as successful. Thank you.